The Memory Project is a global art exchange project that exists to try and provide a sense of hope and comfort to children around the world who are in circumstances that are not ideal. The Memory Project organization tries to bring schools with more resources from around the world together to create portraits of these children in the different areas and then sends out the artwork to them to give them a little bit of hope and comfort even though they're in hard circumstances. So I immediately thought that this would be a good fit. So I contacted Yoon, our high school art teacher, to see if he would be interested in joining this project and help having his students participate in it. This was two years ago. They were able to create 13 portraits for refugees in Syria. Then last year we did an art exchange program with grade five in Miss Angel. This year again, we're doing portraits again with high school and we're working more with children in low income areas in Venezuela. That's what the memory project is and how our school has been connected with it over the years. And uh, we're excited to see what your students are able to create in their art class. Yeah, that would be exciting because it just happened to be so that we are working on a portrait painting and drawing unit now as the first assignment for, for the year. And I can show you a couple of examples of portraits made two years ago. It's a boy with a leafy wallpaper design in the background. And here we have another boy. And these two portraits I'm showing now is a good example on how you can approach this task differently. The first one here I showed you is, uh, is done in a rather simple, minimalistic uh, style, you could say. It's just a very plain face skin color here. Quite easy to do compared to the other one, which is a more elaborate drawing of a boy. That's, I think, how you have to work when you have a class of 13 different students, that you have to have different types of of approaches to it, so everyone can make a, a nice looking portrait according to their own abilities. Because the most important thing when, we, when you work with something like this is that you make something that looks good, because that's what the kids in Venezuela and Syria want to see. As a guideline we have these photographs of children. The only thing we know about them is, like in this case, this girl likes blue and pink. So what I'm planning to do now is to to integrate this with an assignment about pattern design. So we're going to make wallpapers, uh, wallpaper design that will be uh, serve as backgrounds to the portraits. I want to show a little bit of, about the pattern making we're doing now. This one for instance, it's a, it's a pattern made by Nick. The way we made this one was that Nick started out with drawing a shell, a seashell. The reason for, for us to choose seashells is that they, they look good. They're interesting to draw as an independent practice in, in drawing from observation. After the drawing, the initial drawing is made of the shell, then we take copies of that, cut it out, and just create a pattern on a piece of paper. And that pattern can look like, like anything, that's up to the student to design a good-looking pattern. It could be overlapping shells, or it could be just a very static composition that is really up to, to the students. Then, this pattern is traced before it's painted, it's traced onto the portrait, so you have something like this. It's made in a very sober and clean way with uh, color pencils. So the idea with making the pattern separate from the portrait is to find an interesting balance between portrait and background. Sometimes I think it's necessary to, to not do the two different elements of the picture in the same way. For instance, you can use a different technique while doing the background. So here we are using acrylic paint as a contrast to the pencil drawing. I started out when this was blank by picking out my palette on a paper like this, by experimenting with all the different colors. 
And once I decided what my palette was, I sort of like drew out where all the shadows was, were gonna be and then put, put down my colors and then painted it over with water. I'm just working on my portrait right now and what I'm using is watercolors and I'm gonna go in with pencils later once I'm done getting the base color. And I'm working this way because it's easier for me than acrylics since I'm not really good at acrylics and um, I kind of like the way it looks. This is a project where we were like creating portraits for these kids and the way I did it was I started with colored pencil, like watercolors and then painting over it, and now I'm just doing some details with the colored pencil. Right now I'm using acrylics to paint the portrait, and I'm just doing it um, like section by section because that's how I usually do it anyway. So it's easier for me to do it this way.